the uh, ATOs means the element is open to the atmosphere. Oh, so one, the one, one is enclosed. I guess we can open one of these up here. So why would why would you need to have one open or one closed? Uh, is it temperature? So the open one can breathe. When yeah, when you're dealing with uh, current through tungsten, much like a sealed beam, on, we're talking about these T3 headlights. Mm -hmm. Roger, Roger and I tungsten had a right. uh, uh, discussion about T3 uh, headlights this morning. And they, uh, this is an ATO. That element is open, it's exposed. You can actually see it. And that's what we're gonna use. These go right in here. And then we snap that into the cover and it's got that completely enclosed. Uh, it's sealed all the way around so there's no moisture, no water. It's the right way to do that. So, so many times when you try to deal with uh, open fuses, in the old days, we used to have those little inline fuses where they twist them with yeah. the glass tube. The glass tube was yeah, and there was water inside and they'd get corroded and then you'd lose the continuity. And uh, here's another style here. This is what we uh, we had what we took off of those relays it's from Randy. An inline fuse as well. This is a totally different style. So that's a that's a that's a relay or a fuse. That's a fuse. It's a fuse. Oh. Now they have uh, not only fuses of this size. You can also use uh, uh, circuit breakers. Well, they'll actually when they oh. so when it they trips, uh, you can reset it. Yes, if they're tripped because there's uh, uh, not a fuse but a, uh, a circuit breaker, when it gets to a certain temperature, it'll heat up and break it. And then when it cools off, it'll make contact again. Oh. So it's something oh, that you don't have to, resets. it's a great deal that you don't have to go looking for one, yeah. but you're stuck on the side of the road for 15 or 20 minutes until it cools off. Very important to make sure that you have the correct amount of fuse capability and the, crop, the proper wire, because if you uh, overheat any of that uh, circuitry, it's a potential for starting a fire. Anytime the uh, insulation on the wire overheats, it actually melts. And then when you lay a power wire on the ground, fire. It's all done. It's all done. So, <laughs> so you had a diagram on your phone. Can you show that? Oh to, yeah, uh, here we were talking the, about uh, trying to explain uh, the different fuse types. And we turn it sideways. There it is. I'm sure there's some copyright stuff here, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'm sure they'll be happy that we're sharing their stuff. Yeah, there's the a mini fuse, ATC closed. ATO open, and then the maxi fuse. Maxi fuse. All basically the same design. They all work pretty much the same. And you can buy enclosures for any of these at the hardware store. Yeah, and it's pretty common. Uh, like I said, all of the new uh, automotive applications like this truck here or anything that you're driving today, they're all these Euro European style fuses. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the old days, the 50s and 60s, those were glass tube. So the big problem with those is you go to pry them out, breaks the glass, and yeah, it's a pain in the neck. So this was a much better duel much better deal to do that easier so. to pull them out absolutely yeah, much easier so this car the 59 safari it's got a uh, is this the fuse block for right here uh yes i just uh, rebuilt that that was a real project <laughs> so what what did you have to do to rebuild the fuse block to try and get all these fuse holders out of this 60 year old piece of bakelite yeah. without breaking it i imagine that's i had fun. three harnesses i think roger had several others but i picked the best three and looking at all of them, they had some damage, but this one had a broken corner on it. Nothing structural, it's cosmetic, but this had the best uh, description of all of the uh, locations. They're in uh -huh. white print. So I spent three and a half hours taking all of these connectors out without breaking it. Yeah. Put it in the sink and sprayed it with some detergent, and cleaned it and washed it all off. And I went horrified because all the letter went away. No way. Whatever the soap I used just disappeared, so. So then you I, went to this one. I had to take one completely apart, this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, this one was probably nicer, but the, the uh, printing wasn't as uh, uh, well-defined. But uh, after I lost it, I went to this one. And, uh, but to take every one of these out, release them, and get them out of the, uh, out of the terminals, this is, like I said, this is 60-year-old Bakelite. Took a lot of patience. It's been dried off a little <laughs> bit. But uh, you take a screw, well, here, you can probably see a couple of these. If you uh, take a screwdriver and just pry on that, it'll pop and break immediately. Mm. So, but uh, we're all back together and uh, I... Uh, this diagram on here, is this um, what's going on in the fuse panel or is this uh, something else? Yeah, actually, uh, we had the, uh, the original uh, service manual that Roger had, the orange one that we had yeah. out. 
Uh, that was an eight and a half by 11. And uh, oh. as an old guy with uh, bad eyes, it, I couldn't hardly read it. And I was very fortunate. I was able to go online and I found a website that showed the 59 Pontiac. Okay. So now this doesn't have exactly the same schematic that uh, we have in that service manual. Yeah. Uh, because it has a lot more uh, uh, features. Uh, the service manual that we were working with. Oh, it's just peaceful. So you can add the features if you wanted to, though. Well, this this particular schematic shows all of the uh, mostly uh, the the added stuff that's here is all of the uh, dome light features and two door four door. Okay. Um, our car because that was a, a Catalina Safari. Uh, that car or this particular car did not have uh, dome or uh, dome light switches on the rear doors. Okay. We only had dome no, dome light switches in the in the you know, passenger driver on the front. So, and now that car has a switch on the, uh, the dome light and the roof. There's a switch there. So we have so to- So uh, every one of these wires represented here in relation to this car, obviously this doesn't have the rear dome light switches. You have to run this wire and create yes, a harness yes. for that. Yes, we pretty much, um, when I did the, when the, when the car was at my shop um, well, earlier last year, uh, I already made this harness from uh, the back, which is all the tail lights, uh, tail lights, uh, turn signals, backup lights, license plate light, uh, fuel fuel tank sending unit. That's for the gauge for the gas gauge. Uh, that harness was already done, and it's already routed up to the uh, all the way to the instrument panel. Oh, awesome. So that represents all of this. And then the last time you guys were here, uh, last Monday or Tuesday, we did all of the uh, wiring for the headlamps and no most of the engine uh, yeah. harnesses. So great. All, all this stuff in the middle is what's left. Thanks for explaining <laughs> so, that to me. Yeah, what makes it more difficult is 80% of all that is con, uh, confined right in front of the driver. All that busy stuff is the instrument cluster. So you now have gauges, all the uh, illumination for all the uh, instrument panel, all the fun functions for the headlights, windshield wipers, all Sorry, that. So not only are you coming into this, you're coming back out for the gauges, uh, correct, for the correct. power distribution. And yeah, the problem is all of these terminals here, you can't get these. I mean, I don't have any resource for these. So some of the wire that's here is the 1959 stuff. I took the best of all the pieces that we had out of the, all the different harnesses, utilizing the wires that are attached to these fuse uh, terminals. So that's why we have wires here, but uh, that was enough to uh, complete this particular uh, fuse panel. But yeah, these, these pieces had to be uh, uh, used because again, without these terminals, I have no way to hook that stuff up. Well, it's all over 60 years old. Exactly. So it's amazing exactly. that and, it still uh, works and you did a great job. Excellent well, it was the best, the best that we had with what we could uh, work with, so it does work. So we're gonna be able to put this thing together the way it should be. Good stuff. Thanks for explaining. That.